Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're tackling a really interesting problem called avoid flood in the city. It's a great mix of careful planning and using the right data structures. Let's break it down together. Alright, let's get the main idea. Imagine you're the mayor of a city with a bunch of lakes. You're given a schedule of weather for the upcoming days. On some days it rains on a specific lake, which makes it full. The core problem is this. If it rains on a lake that's already full of water, you get a flood. We absolutely want to avoid that. Luckily we have a tool. On days where there's no rain, we can pick exactly one lake that's full and make it empty again. Okay, let's walk through an example to see the strategy. On day zero, it rains on lake one, it's now full. The next day, it rains on lake two. Now both lakes one and two are full. Then, on day two, we get a sunny day. We could dry a lake, but which one? We don't know what's coming, so maybe it's best to save this sunny day as an option. Now, day three. It rains on Lake 1 again. This is a crisis, because Lake 1 is already full. To prevent a flood, we have to look back and use a sunny day that happened before today. Our only option is the sunny day from Day 2. So we decide that on Day 2, we dried Lake 1. This leads us to our main strategy, which is a greedy one. When we see that a lake is about to flood, we have to act. We look back at all the sunny days we've saved up. We need one that happened after the lake got full, but before the current rainy day. If we have a few options, the smartest, most flexible choice is to use the earliest sunny day possible. This keeps our more recent sunny days available, just in case we need them for another crisis that's right around the corner. So to build this solution, we need the right tools. First, we need a quick way to look up if a lake is full, and, if so, on which day it last rained there. A hash map is the perfect tool for that job. We'll map the lake's number to the day it became full. Second, we need to keep track of all the sunny days we've encountered. And more importantly, we need to be able to find, very quickly, the earliest sunny day after a specific date. A plain old list would be too slow, because we'd have to scan through it every time. A sorted list is exactly what we need, because it lets us use binary search to find what we're looking for super fast. Just a quick heads up, we'll be walking through the solution using Python, but don't worry if that's not your main language. I'll be showing the full code for other popular languages like Java, C++ and JavaScript towards the end of the video. So here's the complete algorithm. We'll go through the weather report one day at a time. If it's a sunny day, we just add its index to our sorted list of available sunny days. If it's a rainy day, things get interesting. We first check our hash map. Is this lake already full? If it's not, no problem. We just update the map to show that this lake is now full as of today. But if it is full, that's our crisis moment. We perform a binary search on our list of sunny days to find the very first one that occurred after the day the lake originally filled. If we can't find one, a flood is unavoidable, and we have to return an empty array. If we do find one, we use it by setting our answer for that sunny day, and we remove that day from our list of available sunny days so we don't use it again. Alright, here is the complete Python code that implements our strategy. It uses a library called sorted containers for that efficient sorted list. Don't worry if it looks like a lot at once, we're about to break down the key pieces. First, let's look at the setup. We create our answer array. For any sunny day we don't use, we can just dry lake one, so we'll pre-fill the answer with ones for now. Then we initialize our sorted list, which will store the indexes of the sunny days. And finally, we create our empty hash map, which we'll call full underscore lakes, to keep track of which lakes are full. The core of the solution is a loop that goes through each day of the rain's forecast. The first and simplest case is a sunny day. If the rain value is zero, all we do is add the current day's index to our sunny underscore days list. Then we can just continue to the next day. Now for the crucial part, handling a potential flood. First, we check if the lake that's getting rain today is already in our full underscore lakes map. If it is, we're at risk. We look up the day it last rained on this lake. Then, we perform a binary search on our sorted list of sunny days to find the index of the first sunny day that comes after that last rain day. If the index we get back is at the end of the list, it means there are no suitable sunny days. A flood is inevitable, so we return an empty array. Otherwise, we've found our day to dry the lake. We grab that day's index, update our answer array to show we're drying this lake on that day, and, very importantly, we remove that sunny day from our list so we can't use it again. Finally, after handling any potential flood, we need to update our state for the current rainy day, we mark the answer for today as minus one because we can't dry a lake on a day it's raining. Then, we update our full underscore lakes map. We set the entry for the current lake to be today's index. 
ILA, because it is now full as of today. This keeps our map ready for the next time it might rain on this same lake. So, how efficient is this approach? For time complexity, we have a single loop that runs n times, where n is the number of days. Inside that loop, our most complex operation is interacting with the sorted list, adding to it, or searching it. Both of these take log n time. So, n operations that each take log n time, gives us a total time complexity of big O, of n log n. For space, in the worst case scenario where every day is sunny, or every lake is unique, both our sunny days list, and our full lakes map could grow to the size of n. Therefore our space complexity is big O of n. Alright, as promised, here is the full solution in Java. It uses a tree set which works perfectly as our sorted list of sunny days, and a hash map for tracking full lakes. You can pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. Next up, here is the C++ version of the solution. Here we use STD, set, as our sorted data structure for sunny days, and STD, map, to track the full lakes. Again, feel free to pause and review the code. And finally, here is a solution in JavaScript. It's worth noting that JavaScript doesn't have a built-in sorted set that's as convenient as in other languages, so a truly optimal solution would require a custom data structure. This version shows the same logic, but the search for a sunny day is less efficient. So let's quickly recap the main points. The winning strategy was a greedy one. When you're forced to act, make the choice that leaves you with the most options for the future, which in this case meant using the earliest available sunny day. We also saw how crucial it was to pick the right data structures. Using a hash map for quick lookups and a sorted set for fast searching made our solution efficient. And finally, the problem showed that sometimes, the best move is to delay a decision until you have more information, like we did by saving up our sunny days. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leak code easy medium or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions, go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also if you're looking for even more leak code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems, so if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out, the link is in the description below. Hope this Leak Code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.